Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. I'm Chef Dean Max. Today, Brussels sprout salad. I know it sounds kind of boring, but it's not. It's amazing. I and mean, you're going to learn something that you probably did not know about Brussels sprouts. So stay with me. Subscribe if you're not doing that. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Click that bell and I'll send you all the cool new things I have coming up. So see you back in a second. Okay, you guys, Brussels sprout salad. Now, what's so special about a Brussels sprout salad is that a lot of you guys thought that Brussels sprouts needed to be cooked, but they don't. And I'm going to show you today a great raw presentation for Brussels sprouts. Um, and this is a great condiment because Brussels sprouts have a hardiness to it. Like some leafy lettuce, you cut it, you put the dressing on it, and it falls and gets flat quickly, right, decomposes. This is the kind of, that you could put on a buffet and it's going to hold life to it for a while. So uh, it's going to have crunch and um, it's going to have freshness, all the different things that you're putting with it. So it's really nice in the salad. It makes a great base for the salad. And not only that, it's a great accompaniment to anything crispy or things that are like a little fatty. Like uh, I love to do it with like chicken schnitzel. So if you're breading your chicken and frying it and it's crispy, you want, what do you want with that? You don't want something creamy, you want something fresh. So this fresh Brussels sprout salad is fantastic with that. Or if you're doing like uh, kind of fried fish in a batter, like fish and chips, uh, you're doing like a, a nice fish like that, it's gonna be crispy, it's gonna go really nice with this salad. So this salad can be used for a million different things, and I'm gonna show you how to make it right now. So let's get started. So Brussels sprouts, let's, let's already find those. The Brussels sprouts you're gonna get, they're gonna be these small little Brussels sprouts like this, right? You can get all different sizes. Sometimes they get big, right? If they get big, they're easier to cut actually. So with those, I just wash them and then I cut them in half, right? Through the root like this. Now, when I lay them down, I cut the roots off like this because we don't want the root. We're going to cut the whole Brussels sprout. We want the whole Brussels sprout in here. So we want to cut the roots off. Can you cut the root off before you cut it in half? Yes, of course. Sometimes that's actually preferred. Then I take, sometimes I'll take the outer layer off. These are little baby ones, so I don't. But sometimes, you know, when you buy Brussels sprouts, you get those really monster ones. And if you get those really big ones, then I kind of take out this outer, the outer leaf and you get this perfectly inside tender one. And I keep those flat on the cutting board like this. So even these little baby ones, sometimes I'll pull some of the outer pieces off because they get kind of damaged and beat up a little bit. Now, I'll lay these flat. You can see how I'll lay these flat like this. And I'm going to, with my fingertips, I'm going to lay them in a, in a line like this, three at a time here, right? And I'm just going to go really paper thin with this slicing, okay? Nothing crazy, super easy, right? Does it matter? Could, could they be a little bit thicker? Yes. But the thinner they are, I think the more elegant they are. So I've kind of got this whole bowl right here you can see that are already peeled or like already peeled and de-rooted and, uh, and uh, sliced, right? It doesn't take very long to do that. So it's a really um, nice uh, product right there. Very crisp and beautiful. Now with that, we're going to start the rest of this stuff up. We're just going to throw it all in there and marinate it. So here I've got myself a, uh, here I've got myself a big bowl. The big bowl, I'm going to make my dressing. So the dressing, I'm going to take some Dijon mustard, put a nice tablespoon of Dijon mustard in there. Okay, and then I'm going to take some yogurt. Now, if you don't like dairy, you can leave the yogurt out. It's not imperative that you use the yogurt, but I'm going to take like a nice hearty, a little bit more than that, a little bit, a tablespoon and a half maybe of the yogurt. So it's not an extreme amount of yogurt. And this yogurt and mustard I'm going to mix up. That's going to be like a fattiness to it. Um, it's going to give a creaminess to it. And then with that, I'm going to put in a lot of black pepper. Okay. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt. And then I'm going to put in probably, let me see here, one, two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. And then mix that up nice. I'm going to put in one teaspoon of apple vinegar, okay, 
Now the teaspoon of apple vinegar is going to give us kind of, I'm going to use a nice mother vinegar and it's going to give us a really nice um, kind of vinegary acidity to this. And I like this to be highly acidic because we're also adding lime to this, right? This is nice in the summertime uh, or not. You know, what's weird enough is um, Brussels sprouts, you know, sometimes start up a little bit early. So you do get them in the late part of summer. Um, I'm going to put lime, one lime. Um, because it's usually a fall, they're a fall product. But sometimes you find them on sale, and I found these beauties on sale. And when things are on sale, it's because it means there's a lot of them in the market. Um, so it's, they're, so they're started off somewhere. Um, now, with this, once I've mixed this, I want to taste it. Why am I tasting my dressing? Because it's easier to adjust it like this when it's got nothing in it. So, you know what? It's it. Perfect. Mm. It's got high acidity. It's not low acidity. It's got the acidity of the yogurt, acidity of the apple vinegar. It's got the acidity of the lime. So it's really nice. Here I've got fresh dill. Now the only thing I want to do with the dill is I'm going to take off these heavy stems like this. You don't have to pick it perfect. It can have some small stems in there. It's fine. But these are like you can see. Look how big those are, right? Those are really heavy stems. See, but like this one has a little bit of a heavy stem on there. And I'll go through it. Now, when we look at it, what do I mean? Like um, anything like this, where it's kind of heavy and gets really rooty, I'll, I won't, I'll take that out. But so these little stems like this, they're going to chop up fine. So I want to take that and I'm going to just slice this. Now, do I need to chop this ultra small? No, I don't. Um, I'm just going to chop it like, you know, little like maybe eighth of an inch uh, slices. Okay, and I don't need to go back and forth on it. That's, this is actually like um, right there is a third of a bunch. So when you buy a bunch in a store, that's a third of that. So you don't really even need a lot. I mean, it's a good amount of dill, but I love dill in the summertime. Now I'm gonna show you with cucumbers, I've peeled these summer cucumbers. They're different than a European cucumber. They're, you know, the kind of more domestic cucumbers. They have a big seed packet. See the big seed packet right here? So that big seed packet can mean that it gets more watery than you want it to get. So if this salad is going to sit around, let me show you what I do. I cut this in half, and I cut it in, in, in half again. That makes quarters, right? Now, when I take my knife and I cut it in a bias on the quarter, what have I done? I've cut out all the seeds. The seeds are here, and I put the seeds there. So now I don't have seeds in this, and I don't have uh, all that wateriness that's with those seeds. So if I was to put salt on these cucumbers, those seeds would really, um, those seeds would really let out a lot of liquid. So what I'm doing is really getting rid of excess cucumber water by doing that. Now those cucumbers normally is good for you. They're good to eat. What I would do, I suggest doing is those cucumber seeds like that, put them in a container with any of these scraps that you like would normally use for herbs that would puree well, like celery scraps, those kind of things, fennel scraps. Put those in a little container in the freezer, and then later you could puree those and use those for juices and smoothies, um, if you do green smoothies. I'll, I would mix that with pineapple and apple, and uh, I would mix it with, um, I would mix it with celery, um, and it'd be really nice. Uh, so you, you're using apple and stuff like pineapple, to, apples and pineapples to make it, kind of give it a sweetness, but, but these, um, are really healthy for you. So I, I feel bad just throwing them away. So um, you take the, the uh, pieces like that, cut them into sticks. You see these sticks like this? This is called a baton. The French call it a baton. But then I go back and I cut these batons like this into a dice. And I just put this dice right in my, my dressing. Okay. Now here, I'm going to take a full cherry tomato and cut it from top to bottom lengthwise like this and I've got a whole bunch that I've already done here boom they just go in simple right then what am I gonna do I'm gonna season these with a touch of salt now we already have salt in the dressing so don't overdo this just put a light, little bit of light on them and then mix them up okay and I'm gonna probably put just a little more drizzle of olive oil because you can have never enough extra virgin olive oil right and then I'm going to add in our Brussels sprouts like this, okay? 
Now, I want to just fold this. And now we have this beautiful Brussels sprout salad that's looking fantastic. And all the yogurt, the acidity. Why is it high acidity? Because I want the high acidity to kind of meld out with this mellowness of the, the these Brussels sprouts. They need high acidity because we added it to this, but now we need brightness. We don't want it to be dull. There's nothing worse than eating these things and we've created this in dull environment. There's not enough salt, there's not vinegar, there's not enough, you know, flavor, spice, heat, whatever, right? So those, that's a problem. So you guys don't do that in your cooking. In your cooking, you need to make sure you have high acidity. Now, if you taste these now, after we've mixed it, and you decide, oh, it's still not as acid enough, put more lime in there, put more apple cider vinegar, put more yogurt, whatever, if you want it creamier. I like it this creaminess. It's creamy, but it's not wet. Mm. That's fantastic. It doesn't need anything. It's got the right amount of salt. It's got a little bit of spiciness from Dijon mustard. It's got the fattiness from the yogurt and the olive oil. Um, still very healthy fat. It's got nice acidity from the yogurt, from the lemon, from, the, from all that. And it's just a really bright salad. So to plate this up, like I said, I would do is have, I would serve this salad with a big stack of fried chicken schnitzel, right? And let people take their chicken schnitzel and put this salad right on top of it. And when you eat those things together, you get that freshness. But otherwise, if you wanted to just have this salad like this, right? You put a couple spoonfuls of that salad in, in someone's plate. Now, over here, we talked about balance, right? We have acidity, we have fattiness, creaminess, right? Saltiness. But we need spiciness and uh, kind of a crunchiness, and we need more crunchiness, and we need um, this nuttiness. So what I've done here, and you guys can see, is I've made um, peanuts, and I've just sautéed these in a pan. Now, what I, when I sauté peanuts in a pan, it's different when I roast them. It's easier when you roast them. When you sauté them in a pan, you're going to char them a little bit more. I kind of like to char sometimes, but and it's easy to do in a pan. But um, if you take the raw peanuts. If you took raw peanuts um, and you put them on a baking sheet and baked them in the oven at 325 or 350 um, with the ingredients that, that you want to put on there, that's the easiest way to do them. They cook more evenly. If you do it in a pan, you got to always got to be moving the pan and making sure not to burn it. Now, what these have on them is a little bit of spicy honey, a little bit of smoked paprika, and salt. Okay, so that's why they're this color. Okay, and then with this, I would just put some right on the top like that. Damn, you have this beautiful balance. Wow, these are so good. That spicy honey gives a little bit of candy flavor and that kicks you with some spice and you've got nuttiness. With this dish, it goes perfect. So try this soon, try raw Brussels sprouts. If you don't like it like this, take them, mix them with olive oil and uh, lemon juice and put your favorite salad vegetable in there and it's gonna work. And you're gonna see that Brussels sprouts is gonna be your new favorite salad component. So I'll see you back in the kitchen soon. I'm Chef D. Max.